Hello everyone, and welcome to the LEGO Discovery Channel. Tonight we are going to be exploring the plant cell and all of its functions by comparing it to a factory. Cells are the basic unit of life in all living things and are mostly self-sufficient. We compared the plant cell to a factory. The cytoskeleton of the cell supports the cell and contributes to its rigidity. The steel beams inside the factory function similar to the cytoskeleton holding up the roof and the walls in place. Speaking of the walls, the walls of the factory have the same job as the cell wall. They support and protect the cell from the outside while helping the cell to stay strong and rigid. However, because the cell sometimes needs to let things such as proteins or water into or out of the cell, it has the cell membrane. The cell membrane is selectively permeable, which means that it can choose what goes in and out of the cell. The guarded doors of a factory represent the cell membrane because they can let the good things through and keep the bad ones out. As we begin our tour of the inside of the cell, our first stop is the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center for the entire cell, giving out instructions to every single part. The manager's office is a perfect example of the nucleus because it oversees all of the cell's operations and workers. The nucleus also contains the cell's DNA, which is used by the cell for long-term memory. The DNA is represented by the blueprints for building the factory because it stores the instructions needed to construct the other components of the cell, such as proteins. Next, we are going to visit the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum's main job is to synthesize proteins. The reason it is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum is because of the ribosomes attached to it. The ribosomes, which are actually what make the proteins, are represented by the workers, and the orange jelly beans symbolize the proteins. After the proteins have been synthesized, they are sent off to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum to be modified. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum appears smooth because it does not have any ribosomes attached to it. As you can see, there are no workers present in this section of the factory. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum does other tasks too, such as the synthesis of lipids and the detoxification of drugs. The protein's next stop is at the Golgi apparatus, but in order to get to it, they need to be transported by the vesicles, which are represented by the workers carrying the jelly beans from place to place. The Golgi apparatus, which is represented by the packaging plant, packages the proteins and sends them off to their final destination, inside or outside of the cell. The excess materials that aren't needed right away are stored in the vacuole, a large fluid-filled sac that stores things such as proteins, water, or salts until they are needed. The vacuole is represented by the storage facility in the factory. Last, but certainly not least, we have the lysosomes, which are the cleanup crew of the cell. Lysosomes recycle proteins or even other organelles that have gone bad or outlived their usefulness. The factory's janitor has the same job as the cell's lysosomes. Now you may be wondering how a plant cell gets its energy to make all these proteins. There's actually two ways, the first being the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts make energy from the sun by a process called photosynthesis. The main pigment involved in these reactions, chlorophyll, is what gives plants their green color. Chloroplasts are represented by the solar panels on top of the factory because they both make power from the sun. The second way that energy is produced is with mitochondria, which are sometimes called the powerhouses of the cell. The mitochondria convert chemical energy from food into compounds that are more convenient for the cell to use as energy. The power plant inside the factory is a perfect example of the mitochondria because it too makes a lot of energy used by the factory. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in next time when we explore the similarities and differences between a plant and animal cell.